Now to the decades old mystery surrounding Karen Silkwood. Those involved still questioning what happened to her. And tonight, for the first time, one of the major players in the case is sharing his story. You may remember Silkwood was a chemical technician at a plutonium fuels plant in Crescent. Her story was launched into the national spotlight in November of 1974. That's when she tested positive for plutonium exposure at work. And later it was discovered there was plutonium in her apartment. There are many theories about how it got there. You likely saw some of those theories in the movie that starred Meryl Streep. Silkwood was sent to a lab for extensive testing for several days, and when she returned, friends say that she was on a mission to expose dangers at that Crescent facility, but she did not get the chance. Karen Silkwood died on an Oklahoma roadway. It was the same night. She was headed to meet a New York Times journalist, and tonight, for the first time since that night, nearly 50 years ago, that journalist is sharing his story and his theory behind what happened to Karen Silkwood. KOCO's Elise Jones has his story only on Five. We went to Oklahoma City and waited for Karen, who was the, that was the schedule and uh, she never came. Karen Silkwood died in a car crash on the way to meet investigative reporter David Burnham. The New York Times journalist wrote stories on nuclear energy at the time. Burnham was approached about the whistleblower and what was described to him as proof that something was very wrong at the nuclear facility. And I at first said no, but my bureau chief said, yeah, you're going. Now as he so, nears 90 you know, years city. old, Burnham agreed to talk with KOCO for the first time. He was waiting for Karen Silkwood with a member of the Oil, Chemical and Atomic Workers Union. And it got later and later, and we eventually got a call from someone in the uh, Kermagee factory that she had, been had died in a car crash. He describes heading to the scene of the crash that killed Silkwood that same night. That night was very scary. And going down there, uh, I drove the, uh, the guy from the union and the other person crazy by driving slowly. I don't know why I drove slowly, but they could drive faster, drive faster. When they arrived, they found debris at the scene, but investigators had already removed the car. So what happened? The official ruling, Silkwood died in a single car accident and had medication in her system that may have caused her to fall asleep at the wheel. The union wasn't buying it. The union hired an investigative organization to look into it, and the union concluded that her car had been <coughs> rammed by some car from the rear. Did someone want to stop Silkwood from meeting the national journalist that night? They may not have wanted to uh, kill her, but they wanted to scare her and make her shut up. The company Silkwood worked for, Kerr McGee, denied any involvement, and Burnham agreed it couldn't have been the company. I eventually decided that uh, it was really unlikely that Kerr McGee executives would uh, try to kill her, especially in a way that's so dubious, running into the back of a car and what's, how is that gonna work? But was it an accident, as the official report said? Do you think that she ran off the road or do you think that somebody hit her and why? And it's possible that someone came up and hit him. Maybe hit the back of the car to scare her and uh, you know got out of hand and uh and killed her but uh I, I have no evidence of that of course that's just sort of speculation on my part what he said is clear silkwood was right about the trouble at the plant he pointed to a nuclear regulatory commission report published years later we had evidence that she was going to talk about problems at cimarron and it's clear someone wanted to hurt the whistleblower Someone was bringing uh, nuclear material to her house and uh, trying to uh, poison her that way. I mean, I just don't know what can make of it. 
Union investigators reported that Silkwood had a folder full of documents with her the night she was planning to meet Burnham and her car crashed. But what happened to that folder and its contents remains as mysterious as her death. Elise Jones, KOCO 5 News. No one was ever charged in any way with contributing to Karen Silkwood's crash, and the official report is still listed as a single vehicle accident. This is just the tip of the iceberg. We have had a team of investigative journalists. They've been pouring through these documents right here. Yeah, digital editors Brooke Withrow, Addison Cleaver, along with Elise Jones, they've done amazing work. They have dug up files that were believed to have been missing until now.